In Power K-12, named 14 DC schools Bold Performance Schools in 2022. Bold Performance Schools serve a high population of priority students with significantly better academic outcomes than schools that serve similar student populations. Here's what the teachers and leaders at Burroughs Elementary School in Ward 5 had to share about their work. My name is LeVar Jenkins. I am the principal of Burroughs Elementary School. Burroughs Elementary School is a school of generations. We have tons of family members that attend Burroughs. So we have aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews that currently attend and always come back to the school. And there's a sense of familiarity with all the stakeholders involved. What makes Burroughs Elementary School special uh, is the fact that we have a high retention rate. Uh, we have a lot of staff members that have been here for 10 plus years, 20 plus years, um, and that makes the school really special. Staff retention is extremely important um, because it keeps the flow and the continuity of instruction within the building. When we have a staff member that is in a specific grade level and they teach in that specific grade level for multiple years, they only get better, right? And so we then take that expertise and then leverage that to other teachers. So I would definitely say that keeping staff is extremely critical because it only enhances the instruction within the building. My name is Hope Harrod. I'm a fifth grade ELA and social studies teacher at John Burroughs Elementary School. I love teaching here because there are so many adults in this building who are so dedicated and they really uh, appreciate the role that they have in the lives of children. They're very dedicated to making sure that they are enriching and developing young people. We have extremely strong leadership that understands and trusts teachers. I think that's really important for teachers because we know what's best for children. We're in the classroom with children and it's nice to know that we have administrators who believe in us and who um, will let us follow our philosophies. Our secret sauce is understanding relationships and knowing that relationships are at the core of what we do. It'll be difficult to get in front of a group of students and not necessarily knowing what their struggles are, um, how best they learn, um, what their family did over the weekend. So all of that to say that relationships are extremely important and that's something that we truly hone in on um, in addition to the teaching and learning. Holistically, we want to develop the, the whole child. Um, we want to ensure that students feel safe when they come to the building um, and that they have a voice when they come to the building. So couple that with STEM, because we are a STEM school, authentic teaching and learning is at the forefront for us. I think one of the things that elevated us to bold status is the fact that there was a lot of relationship building within this process. We first had to understand that during the pandemic, there was a lot of trauma that occurred. Um, and having that open space with teachers and staff allowed us to, to face that trauma and then get to the heart at teaching and learning. So for us, the pandemic actually brought us closer together. And as a result, we're seeing, seeing student achievement at its highest levels. Our school's approach to teaching and learning really depend on the mindset, right? So when we talk about mindsets, we don't look at it from a deficits approach, we look at it from a needs-based approach. So oftentimes when we have collaboration meetings, uh, specifically with our MTSS system, uh, we have that conversation grounded in strengths and needs and not deficits. The first thing that we implement that results in student learning, I would have to say, is our literacy approach to early grades. Um, we really take a targeted approach uh, for students understanding how to read and then eventually that transfers over into reading comprehension. So leveraging those two aspects and making sure that our students, one, know how to read um, and then comprehending what they're reading is extremely important uh, throughout the day. Discourse for us is extremely important. When we talk about discourse, we really try to get students into the habit of just having natural discussions uh, with one another and not having those conversations being forced, right? So we wanna make sure that our students are engaging in that dialogue, one, from an authentic standpoint, um, but two, also allowing the teachers just to facilitate um, how those discussions are going. Students have to naturally uh, know how to defend their viewpoints, right? They have to understand 
what they want to express and then use facts to back up what they're saying. Um, and that's a real world skill that kids can not only utilize here within a building, but also uh, in a community as well. And in addition to that, we then want to take those conversations um, and then transfer that over into written format. Um, so discourse, I would have to say, is another important leverage point that we use uh, throughout the building. I know that there's great teaching and learning occurring when I can walk down the hallway. And as I'm walking down the hallway, I can see a student-led small group where the students are actually leading that small group. It's really refreshing to see students taking ownership of not only what they're learning, but how they're gonna apply that learning to something greater. It's okay for students to disagree with one another um, and engage in that dialogue. However, the important factor is that they have facts to back up what they're saying. And so that aspect of teaching and learning is extremely crucial because from there, students can only flourish. I think it's really important for students to be able to find their voice. Um, as a fifth grade teacher, I think it's, you know, they're at an age where they are able to think critically and they have the tools to do it, but sometimes they don't know how to access those tools. And I think that one of the things that I try to do is help them learn to understand how to properly articulate themselves so that they can think about a text and understand the meaning behind the text. At the fifth grade level, traditionally we've been thinking about, you know, grades kindergarten to two or to three as learning to read and grades three to five as reading to learn. And I really believe that that's true because I think it's important for students who are in the intermediate of the elementary school grades to really truly understand that they're no longer just looking at a text in order to find a correct answer. They're actually examining a text to make meaning of that text and to figure out how that text fits into the larger context of the world. I think that, as I was saying before, my philosophy about students finding voice, ultimately what I want them to do is to be able to see their place in the world and understand that their voice matters. And part of what happens in a literacy classroom is students are able to uncover some of the skills and learn strategies that will help them access texts so that they can learn about their world and so that they can articulate their opinions and their thoughts and their dreams and their hopes and also make goals for themselves. And I think that one of the things that we do as a community at Burroughs is try as hard as we can to create an environment where students feel safe enough to take risks and to struggle and understand that struggle can actually be very productive. Um, it's important for us to build those skills in students because when they go out into the world, we want them to be able to apply them and still know that they have all that they need to be successful, even if they make mistakes, even if they struggle. My name is Tarsha Warren, I'm John Burroughs Elementary School. I am the Assistant Principal of Literacy. The first thing we do is our needs-based small grouping. So we look at not just the data point of the child, but the actual needs of the child. So you can look at a data set and see a color, like um, doubles or I ready, whatever your data point is, and that child may be green or vice versa, that child might be red. Well, clearly within that band, that child has some highs and some lows, they have needs. So we will take those needs of that child and we formulate our literacy um, plans around those. Planning collaboration is really important because it's important for teachers to understand what goes on in the classrooms of each other. And it's also important for teachers to align their philosophies and make sure that we're all aiming towards the same goal. So when you plan and when you get together as a community or as a learning unit, it's important for us to be very honest about what we're doing in the classroom and be able to share our goals and share our objectives with each other. For us, I think it's really knowing what our students' needs are, and that comes from analyzing the data and really thinking about specifically what individual children need. I don't think that we identify our children as at-risk children, but we do identify children based on what their needs are. And I think we spend a lot of time really focusing on making sure that we are providing all the the support that they need in order to be the best performer they can be. We have services that are wraparound services for the school to support students and their emotional needs. We also have supports for students who have special needs. We have teachers that come and push in and pull out. We have students who need for language support. But we also, we have supports within the classroom. So that means that putting kids into groups based on their need and based on individual needs that could could be very flexible um, is a really important way to make sure that you're you know following up on and tracking and supporting their learning. 
in a way that you can see it. I know when students are learning, when they come up to me at recess and tell me all the exciting things that they learned about that particular morning. I know that students are happy about their learning um, as they're coming into the building with a huge smile on their face. And they're, they're telling me how excited they are to see their teacher. Um, and for me, that makes all the difference in the world. Learn more about DC Bold Performance Schools at www.dcboldschools.org. Bold Schools is an initiative of Empower K-12. Thank you to the schools, leaders, staff, and students who spent time sharing their views on their success.